Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through the calculations to estimate your bad debts using the percent of receivables method. So before I get into the actual math, let's just start off talking about the two kind of common estimation techniques that companies use to figure out their bad debts. The first is what's known as the percent of sales method, or the percent of, as you see I have written here, credit sales method, where essentially you take a percentage of every account receivable sale that you make, so every sale on credit that you make, and whatever you determine mathematically from taking that percentage, um, that determines the amount of bad debt that you record um, on your income statement. So in other words, debit bad debt expense for whatever amount you calculate as a percentage of your um, sales. The other technique, and the one that I'm going to spend the time on this video talking about, is percent of receivables. In this situation, instead of just assuming that a certain percentage of your credit sales will be uncollectible, you instead assume that a certain percentage of your receivables will be uncollectible. And so you take a percent of your receivables, and that percent tells you the ending balance that you need in your allowance for doubtful accounts account. And then the difference between that ending balance that you calculate and whatever balance is currently in the allowance account, that is what you are going to record to your bad debts, debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. You notice I have in both of these, I have, for the first one I say it's an income statement approach. For the second one I say it's a balance sheet approach because in the first one, you're taking a percentage of revenue to figure out what expense you need to record. All right. In the second one, you're taking a percent of AR to figure out what contra asset you need to have, and then you record whatever's necessary to get there. Um, I keep talking about these percentages abstractly, but it is worth noting that the percentages you come up with, every company derives for themselves based on things like you see here, historical trends, industry trends, economic trends. Companies have a variety of ways to say, historically, what don't we collect? Or, hey, we're entering an economic downturn. Um, is what we don't collect probably going to go up based on similar economic downturns? Or, hey, what do the competitors in our industry typically not collect? Um, and so you're going to kind of derive your own company-specific percentage to use regardless of, of which technique you use. Um, it is also worth noting here that percentage of receivables is going to be a more accurate way of doing things because you are constantly looking at the actual receivables that are still outstanding from customers rather than simply the sales you've made to customers. Um, and so that's going to be a little bit more accurate. And now I'll, I'll go into the details of it on the next slide. All right, so here we go. An example of where we're putting percent of receivables to work. Flyer Corps had net sales of 100,000 during the year. 70,000 of the sales were on credit. FlyerCore's beginning AR balance was $45,000. Its beginning allowance balance was $6,500. Record FlyerCore's bad debt journal entry if 10% of receivables is their basis for bad debts. All right, so there's two things that we're going to need to deal with here. And the first is going to be what's in our AR account and what's in our allowance account. That's going to be the second thing. So here's our ledger for AR. Here's our ledger for allowance. It tells us that the beginning balance in the AR account is $45,000. It also tells us that we made $70,000 worth of sales on credit. So those credit sales are going to make AR go up. Now, absent any other information, what this then tells us is at the end of the period, we have 115000 sitting in our receivables account. The percent of receivables method says we assume that, in this case, 10% of our receivables will not be collectible, or 10% of this 115000 So I say times 10%. That gives me 11,500. And if I'm assuming that 11,500 is the portion of AR that is not collectible, what I'm really calculating here is what do I need in my allowance account? Because on our balance sheet, we are going to show AR 115,500 
And then beneath it, we're going to put less allowance for doubtful accounts. And in this case, we're, we're saying that our allowance should be 10% of our AR or 11,500. Okay, so that's the goal here. And, and that's why this is a balance sheet approach to doing things, because we're using one balance sheet number to take a percentage and calculate a corresponding balance sheet number. Now, this still doesn't get us to the journal entry we need, right? Remember, the, the problem says record Flyer Corps' bad debt journal entry. Well, this is just telling us what we need in the allowance account. We still need to figure out, well, what's the journal entry required? And that's going to require us to know what else is going on in the allowance account. Notice it told us that the allowance had a beginning balance of 6,500 in it. So 6,500 allowance balance. We don't need a journal entry for $11,500. The reason being, we already have some of that in the allowance account. The only thing we need a journal entry for is the difference in order to get allowance up to $11,500. And so we do the math on that, and that's going to require another $5,000 credited to the allowance account. I'm going to put next to this plug because we're simply calculating the difference to plug that. That's what it's going to take to get from 65 to 11.5. And the journal entry we're going to record to get there is debit, bad debt expense, $5,000, credit, allowance for DA. $5,000. This right here will accomplish that and get our allowance balance where it needs to be. Okay. If you're at all familiar with uh, the accounting for, for um, bad debts using the allowance method, you'll recognize this journal entry as the estimation journal entry. And this is how we come up with that estimated valuation of what are our estimated bad debts. It's a percent of our receivables adjusted for what we've already recorded. One last thing I'll point out before I kind of bring this, this, this lecture to a close is um, a little bit of a what-if scenario. Um, instead of this $6,500 starting balance in the allowance account, what if I had said the starting balance was actually $12,000? Now, you'll see the reason that I bring up this what-if scenario is because notice we figured out we needed 11500 in the allowance account. If we've already got 12000 in there, we've already got more than what we need. And so we are not going to add more to the allowance account. In fact, we need to subtract some from the allowance account to get it where it needs to be. In this case, $500. And so what's going to happen to, to make that subtraction is we are going to debit allowance for doubtful accounts, 500, and we're going to credit bad debt expense. It's not often that you see a credit to an expense, but this is one situation. And the reason is because we overestimated what we needed in a prior period. That's how that beginning balance got there. And so when we made that original overestimation of 12,000, we recorded 12,000 in bad debt expense, and now we've determined well, we didn't really need that much. And so we back out part of that estimation to get where we need to be. And we're going to undo bad debt expense that we previously recorded now that we know um, that we, we, we overdid it back in, that, in, in whatever previous period we recorded that in. All right. So um, just want to point that out because um, at the end of the day, typically we, we teach uh, bad debt expenses as having this format. But in the event that you've previously overestimated your allowance, the journal entry can flip in order to reduce the allowance down to where it needs to be. All right, that is it for estimating bad debts using the percent of receivables method. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.